It is important that we understand that he is the faithful God. And he's not faithful sometimes. He is forever faithful. We have problems when we allow the enemy to play with our minds, especially when we go through those seasons that we sang about. It's times like that we look at the season that we are in. And if it's not a positive time, we forget the times when he has been faithful to us. But it's always good to look back. Look back and see how many times he has brought us through situations. How many times he has delivered us from circumstances that we never thought we would come out of. And we must always know that he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He is the faithful God, and he is a forever faithful. Come, put your hands together for him this time. <laughs> Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. We thank you that we can depend on you. We thank you, Lord, that delay is not a denial. Though you may tarry, Lord, we know you will come through. It's only a matter of time. Oh, we bless you, we praise you, and we thank you for your goodness, your mercies, your faithfulness, and your graciousness towards us. We bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God bless you richly. You may be seated. But this evening we have our brother coming to relieve me from the saddle I think I have been on since every Friday for the year so far so that our brother Harry is going to come and minister to us so come put your hands together and welcome him praise the Lord thank you pastor and thank you for that special welcome and a very pleasant evening to every one of you this is my first visit here for this new year 2012 and I do not believe the least bit it will be out of order to say blessed new year <laughs> amen uh, it was very hectic for us during the Christmas season we were involved in a number of outreach programs as you know in the Londonville area we do a lot of social work and almost 500 meals we were able to give out to the people and uh, a lot of cooking took place, food still smelling, <laughs> and uh, after December came to an end, I thought I would take a little break in January. Well, last month I preached 21 times, not only at the Longdonville area, but a number of churches throughout the country, and it seems as though that the way things are going, it will be no difference in this month, February. Already there are a number of services lined up uh, throughout the nation that I'll be sharing in. But I always, always honored to come and be here. When I come, as you know, I do not come as a guest. It's like coming home. And I was coming in the office and pastor saw me. And he said, you're looking nice. I said, well, I'm coming home. I must look nice. <laughs> All is here, you know. I cannot, I cannot, you know, stop saying the wonderful relationship over the years, you know, that uh, Holiness Revival Ministries and my wife and myself since in South Key, from the very first time, I recall when I went there Friday night. From that time, God knitted us together. Pastor saw me on television in the 90s. I was the only preacher on television. And something, something he heard or something he saw came in and me and he inquired. And he, he wanted to get in contact with me. And a friend of mine who knew him said, there's a Spanish preacher. <laughs> That's how we describe him. Amen. I said, well, I wonder if he's from Venezuela. Or where are you from? <laughs> in Port <laughs> in Port of Spain, want to see him. I'm accustomed to Port of Spain because, you know, I stayed a number of years living in Port of Spain, and that's a long story, my testimony. And even before, before this was a church, 
<laughs> Many times I sat right there while it was a cinema in my old days, right there. <laughs> and so I um, came and, you know, the Lord knit us together. And um, I'm so grateful and so thankful that God has kept the relationship over the years. And I told Pastor, I said, I trust the Lord will keep us together, working together, and uh, for the rest of the years. Sister Ramki soon sent her love to you. I want you to continue to pray. She is going through a lot of challenges, even myself, health-wise, a lot of things. I can't go by the market and say that. They won't understand. I got to see it in the church. But through it all, God has been good to us. I don't have any reasons to complain. All right? And uh, I just thank God for he's a faithful God. Faithful God. Amen? Get your Bibles. Get your pencil. I got a lot of helpful information coming. Good to see two of my dear friends, brother and sister McCain, with us tonight. I invited them to come. They live in the Port of Spain area, and I told them I'm going to be here, so they came. Thank you so much, brother and sister McCain, for coming. I want to highlight a very interesting incident from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 28. I cannot recall how many times over the years I highlighted this story and even behind this pulpit because of the number of years I've been ministering. But I'm taking this incident in a different slant tonight because in preparation for this evening's message, the Lord began to show me some truths that I want to share with you. I am not afraid to declare truths because it is a truth that will set you free. So Matthew chapter 28, I want you to look at it very closely. Uh, Acts of the Apostles chapter 28, look at it closely. I'm just going to highlight one verse but if we back up to chapter 27, which we will not do at this particular time. The Apostle Paul together with over 200 and plus men that was regarded as prisoners. They were placed on a ship sailing to Rome. Appeared to be hopeless and helpless. During the course of the journey, we will read, they encountered a number of difficulties, bombarded with a contrary wind. During the sailing, so to speak, that for a while, it seems as though that they will never make it to land. Many days they could not see the sun nor the stars. Hopeless and helpless, they fasted and prayed, sought the face of God very diligently. God extended his mercy and favor to these men. Most of them, they were ungodly. But through his servant, the apostle Paul, who was able to stand in the gap, and as we read along, finally, the ship landed in a little island called Malta. And we pick up from verse 1, when they landed in this place, the people, the islanders, The scripture teaches us, showed kindness to the apostle Paul and some of the men who landed there. Kindness to the extent it was cold, it was raining. These men, they were hungry. You did not have to ask the question. You could have seen it on their faces. They lit a fire to bring a measure 
of comfort to these men that was hurting. The Apostle Paul being very sensitive to the kindness and the hospitality that was displayed among the islanders got into the ark likewise. He began to gather sticks to add to the fire. Knowing very well that more sticks you add to the fire, brighter the flame will be. And brighter the flame, more people will be affected. I commended him. He did not see it necessary to start his own fire. A lot of times people want to start their own fire. Nobody fire good for them. They want to start their own fire. Like we say in this country, if they don't carry the briefcase, it will never be successful. If they don't hold certain position, nothing will work out. So he began to add sticks to the fire. And in the process, watch me now, I'm building the foundation. I want to put you in a state of comfort so you'll better appreciate this message. As he was gathering the sticks to lay them on the fire, there came out a viper. I want to warn you tonight, it's not them viper alarm now. You know, they have all them viper alarm. Not, not that kind of viper alarm we're talking about. It was a poisonous snake. I did some research. The viper was a small snake, but dangerous, poisonous. It came out because it was unsettled. It came out because of the heat. And you know very well when the heat of God begins to burn, then you go see heads rolling. Then you will get to know who is who. <laughs> but this viper didn't run for its life, but cling on to one of the hands of the Apostle Paul. I believe the Apostle Paul himself was shocked and surprised. He didn't cater for that. He was not expecting that. And the people that were standing around began to murmur, being judgmental, scratched their head, looked at the situation and said, you see that fellow there? You see what happened to him? You see what happened to him, Georgie? He's a murderer. You feel he could run, but he can't hide. Look, the vengeance of God is upon him. And they were saying all kinds of things about the Apostle Paul, yet they, not, they did not have a clue about this man. But it came to their own conclusion. Because of what was taking place. But verse 5 is the verse I want to highlight tonight. But he, the Apostle Paul, not one of the islanders, not one of his associates, Recognizing the responsibility was his. Recognizing that he was in danger. He shook off the beast. Into the fire. And he felt no harm. I want to put a little title for the message tonight. Shake it off. Don't let it stay. Because it can hinder you along the way. You like how it is rhyming? <laughs> you should, some people think I should do some extempo. Them fellas, they can't touch me, you know. Shake it off. Come on, I want you to lift your fist. And I, I don't know, the Bible didn't say if it was the left hand or right hand, but trust me, it's a hand, not a foot. <laughs> Raise it up a little bit. Trust me, I ain't going to mislead you. <laughs> now, while you're shaking it off, pass. Don't shake it off too close to Jenny because I don't want you to hit her now, right? <laughs> Say, shake it off. Don't let it stay. Because I do not want it to hinder me along the way. Give the Lord a hand of praise, somebody. You know, as we live this Christian life, dearly beloved, 
and we can never hear too much preaching about it or too much warning we have to watch out for vipers vipers comes in different form and different fashion we need the spirit of discernment to recognize it because not all that glitter is gold and not all that sweet leave a good taste in your mouth but there are things in our lives that we need to address that is holding back us with the intention to hinder or destroy the things that God got in store for us. So therefore, we need to shake it off. Say, so shake it off, somebody. It's amazing in the Christian world today, there are people make emphasis on a lot of things that sometimes can be ignored. Now, I am one of the firm belief that sin is sin. There's no black sin, there's no white sin, and they all carry the same consequences. We think about certain things that is greatly hindering people that we need to shake off. And I'm just giving you some appetizers now. These are coming to the main course. Anger. So often we hear about the dangers of anger. We need to shake it off. It's so easy to get angry. Pastor, a little more than a week ago, they came and they shaped up the plants. You know, we got a lot of plants. It was so much, we cut down some old trees. So we put it by the roadside because every couple days a truck will come. I didn't put it in front of anybody gap. There was a house close by with a couple men. We do well. And I said, fellas are putting that there. It didn't hinder in them. I said, in a couple days it will be gone. That was Friday night. Saturday it remained there. Sunday morning, like I usually do, my service is 8 o'clock. I get up early. I live right at the church. Come down, take off the lights, put on the air condition, etc. Only to open the front door. All that I put on that side, somebody put it on this side. Wood, everything. And all of a sudden, the old man got up. You know the old man? <laughs> I have to remind him, you're dead. <laughs> Were you getting up for your dead? <laughs> but no matter how much you tell him he dead, he just get up. And I know I don't have a hearing problem past, but I hear something like that. And I didn't see no Rottweiler wrong. And I said, you know what? I can't take that direction. I pick it up. I take my time, maybe an extra 20 minutes, and I put it a further distance away from them. I just say that to say this, not to arouse your sympathy, but to show you how quickly you can become angry. And in a split second, what you take to build in 25 years, you could use it, lose it in five minutes. That is a viper we need to get rid of. Hate is another thing. Jealousy is another viper. We need to remind ourselves about this. People are not paying attention to this and they're wondering why they're not blessed. Oh, the church is in the wrong location. The air condition too cool. It's too hot. The pastor, he doesn't know how to swing his hands. He doesn't know how to swing on the chandelier. No, that has nothing to do with that. Are you hearing me? There are strongholds in your life that need to be broken. You're not hearing me tonight. It's a problem. Pride is another thing. That we need to shake off. To every one of us there's a measure of pride. I speak to myself. So often I have to put it under subjection. Especially past when you feel that you're the most good looking preacher in the country. <laughs> you cannot convince yourself that and you say lie. <laughs> Don't think like that. I'm just kidding you know. You know. <laughs> What do you want me to do? I come home. Make a little 
joke the man. I think Friday night is like that. You work all week. Envy, lust. And on and on the list goes. Hold your seat. I want you to get, get ready to write now. I won't tell you how many things we need to shake off. You're going to start timing me. But I got some things that God showed me tonight. And I might be a little vocal about it, but I love you. But I have to tell you because I always believe before you get to the product, there's a process. I always preach and I will keep preaching. Nothing from God come on a silver platter. There is no press button to it. There is no frame it, uh, name it and frame it. Nothing like that. You know, so often we hear preaching and we can never hear too much preaching about what God can do for us. But what are wrong if we turn it around a little now and start talking about what we could do for God? We can never hear too much preaching about what God can give. I love to preach that, but we need to turn it around a little bit and talk about what we can give to God. It's a two-way street. But there are some things that we need to shake off that we don't pay attention to that is keeping us in bondage. And I speak from experience tonight. There are a few things and they all in the letter G. And I go end up with a G called good. But so watch this. You ready? You ready to shake it off? Greed. Say, shake it off. Shake it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say that good at all. Shake it off. What you coming up with that? I thought you'd go come up with something different. Let me tell you folks, uh, it is time to shop, stop shaking the leaves and start getting down to the root. There are some things that we ignore that is detrimental for years and years that is hindering people. And they're wondering why they cannot get the breakthrough. They blame other people. They blame this one. But there are things they do not address in their life. Greed. I look up the dictionary because I always like to have a, a measure of safety. You know what I'm saying? And it says, greed is a strong wish to get more of anything. But, hold on, I ain't finished with that. But, I have no problem in getting more of everything. You no problem with that, Pastor. There are a lot of nice things in this world. Amen. You could never get too much off. Passed by visiting a lady the other day. She said, Pastor, you're coming the right time. Long before I got into the yard, I smelled the chicken. <laughs> Walk into the place, honestly, she pulled out a big old roast chicken. She said, Pastor, glad you come. I want you to have a little peace. It's not that I never ate chicken in my life, but it was so different. I ate a piece Lord, temptation was high on the list to ask her some more. But knowing she had a husband and five children, I said, I can't do that. <laughs> I'm going to leave the lady chicken alone. <laughs> can't do that as a preacher. I can't squeeze and play on her emotion. And say, the Lord, tell me to give you the chicken. No, no, I ain't going to take that direction. Because that ain't going to be true. <laughs> that ain't going to be true. Amen. But greed is something. A strong wish not to just get more of anything, but especially to get more when we don't need it. Are you hearing what I'm saying, folks? There are a lot of people in the world today who are chasing behind things. You sit down and look at them. Most of these things they're yearning and craving and chasing for. And in the process they're hurting people and belittling people. They don't need it dearly beloved. But because of the spirit of greed. They don't need it. They want it. We got to guard against this even in the church today. Because if we allow the spirit of greed to overtake us. In the process of accu uh, uh, accumulating things or getting things that we don't need. It will take away and cheat us of the time we're supposed to give to God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And this is exactly what is happening today. In the quest to get things that we don't need, it is draining us. That we get so wrapped up chasing another dollar and seeing the sign of dollars and cents. And we lose the sign of the old rugged cross. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying this night? I am not throwing words, but I'm preaching the truth. We got to guard against this. The people of God, we are not exempted. We are living in a world today where we are exposed to all kinds of temptation. We need to have structure and discipline in our lives. And we need to know when to draw the mark. I was told of two neighbors living close by. In the country area. Both neighbors, they had no children. They had good jobs. One of the neighbors buy a washing machine. And to provoke the other neighbor, put the washing machine right on the front step. Right there so, you know. <laughs> and it seems as though like they put a loudspeaker. That when they go, chuk, 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 the neighbor next door could hear it. The neighbor said, what? I have to get one too. Financially, they were not in a position. They had other bills and commitments. They took a loan. They squeezed the milk up. They went out of the way. They did things that they shouldn't do. Bought the washing machine. Nothing is wrong with that. But here was the problem. Them had current and them didn't have no current. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't need that. Because I don't work with a crank. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? You went through all the hassle. There were a number of things and sacrifices. I mean. They didn't need that. And beloved, if some of us are honest with ourselves, there are a lot of things that we chase and we hunger for. And in the process, are you hearing me? We short circuit God. Listen to me, folks. We short circuit God. God, are you hearing me? And we do not give to God what he rightly deserves in the process. And in the end, when we get it, we never benefit out of it. It remains there. It gets old. It gets rusty. And it is of no use to us. You ever hear the story about Naaman? The prophet Elisha told him to dip in the river Jordan seven times. After some hesitation, he did it. He was made whole. The prophet sent him on his way. Gehazi. The servant said, he can't get away like that. He began to chase after him. He said, I know the man come with money. I know he come with silver and he come with gold and he come loaded. He can't get away like that. Gehazi ran after him. He didn't need it. You, you check history. Gehazi was well off. But because of the spirit of greed, he went after him. He chased after Naaman. And it profited him nothing in the end. Because he became a leper. Leprosy. Because of the spirit of greed. I think about Luke chapter 12. Jesus talked about a man. He gave a parable. He got up one morning, he was a farmer, a country boy. He looked through the window pass and he saw the garden brought forth so much. I guess he had to think more than twice if it was his garden. I guess he beat the chest and he said, I never knew this boy could plant like that. And seven times he used the word I. I go build a bigger barn. I go pull it down. I go put it here. I go say, boy, take ease. The rest of your life, you retire, whether you get national insurance or not. Amen. He was so selfish because of the spirit of greed. He never thought about his neighbor. He never thought about having a thanksgiving. And in the end, he lost out because Jesus said, uh, God looked down upon him. He saw the condition of his heart and he said, you fool, this night your soul is required of thee. What you saying, Pastor. Life does not consist in the abundance of things we possess. It is necessary that we have a measure of comfort. It is necessary that we have material things to go by. Let us not be fanatics. But we must not allow these things to bring a measure of greed, to chase after it. And in the process to be filled with this world's goods. 
but bankrupt as far as God is concerned. Shake it off, somebody. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shake it off. Number two, here's another viper. Not only the viper, which is greed, there's a viper called gossip. <laughs> somebody passed the ball. This is something we ignore. Many times I have to pull up on myself. According to the dictionary, gossip is a conversation or report about other people's private lives. With the intention to say things that are unkind and slanderous. A lot of people don't see that as a problem, you know. But let me tell you something. In the kingdom of God, that's a big problem. We have to know when to control our tongues. It is small, but yet it is destructive. I love to talk about people. I, I, I fed up talking about dogs and chicken and duck. <laughs> I'm a human. I like to talk about human. I like to hear about human. But I want to say something to me and to all of us. When we hear things about people, if you don't know the facts, keep our mouth closed. If you know, want to know the truth, get the number and ask them before we add our portion. You, you, you hear what I'm saying, these folks? We take it lightly. We bring down people that we do not know or have a clue about them. And this is one thing that I, I observed in my lifetime, and I'm not that old, that people neither have to go to kindergarten school, they don't have to go to primary school, they don't have to go to secondary school, they don't have to go to university, and they have seven degrees in it, and that is gossip. <laughs> they have doctorate in gossip. They know how to do it. They know how to bring you down. They know how to mince your church. We need to be on God. This is not something we should take lightly. Shake it off, somebody. Say, shake it off. I have learned a long time ago how to put an end. And this is one of the ways that when people want to gossip, Sometimes I give them a hearing, and then after I finish, I said, soon as I finish, I go call them and say, you see that. No, don't say that now. Don't say that. Forget it. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? Tell them. When they tell you, you go call them and say, you say it. And you will see how quick it will come to an end. We love to talk, but we've got to be careful. I always say what you don't like for your husband, don't give it to somebody else's husband. What you don't like for your mother or your father or your church or your pastor, don't give it to somebody else. Let them accuse you and say that you're a dumb dog and you can't talk and you don't have a flow of language. But it is better you utter a few words that are constructive than you say a lot that is destructive. If you can't build, don't break. Shake it off, somebody. <laughs> All right, let me move on. Let's see more on that. Number three, here's another viper we need to shake off past. A grudge. Well, people don't talk about anything again, but Richie, a grudge. A serious thing. We make a lot of emphasis on a lot of things, but the eyes don't see, the heart don't grieve. And we make a halaboo about certain things. And they're important issues. Detrimental, worse than viper like Machiavelli, they're doing the same dangers. But because we don't see it visible, we ignore it. But it is doing a lot of the danger and eating a lot of people like cancer. A grudge is a strong feeling of anger and dislike for a person you feel treated you badly. I am not going to ask for a show of hands, but if I do ask for a show of hands, amen. Who was never treated badly, raise your hand. Nobody going to raise their hand. Because everybody to a measure is treated badly. People always say things about you. They always misunderstand you. No matter how good you do. 
no matter how much you give them. I'm talking to you tonight? Huh? They always will say things about you. I learned to console myself with that. Growing up as a young preacher, I had to, I had to struggle with that. Because sometimes the people that you, 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 you help the most are the people who choke you more hard than anything else. Somebody said it's bad when a dog bites you, much more your own dog. I have a different theory to that. I don't care if it's your dog or the neighbor dog, a dog bite is a dog bite. I ain't want no dog bite. I don't care who dog bite me. Whether it be the neighbor dog or my dog, I want no dog bite. Same danger. I ain't want that. But we carry this. We grudge people. Keep the grudge. Always want to put them down. Always bitter against them. And in the process, they're not taking us anywhere. We must come to the conclusion through spiritual maturity, everybody can't be the same. Not every exam you write, you'll be successful. Are you hearing what I'm saying, beloved? What worked for you may not work for me. Your success should not give me an avenue to cry all night. But we need to rejoice with those who rejoice. We need to carry the pain and the agony to those who are hurting. Grudge nobody. Wait on your turn. Are you hearing me? If you be faithful to God, it may take days, it may take weeks, but God delay and not his denial. At the right time, God will come and bring it to pass in your life. Give him a hand of praise, somebody. <laughs> Grudge nobody. Whether the car big or small, whatever it is. Amen. As long as we be faithful to God. It may not come in the model. It may not come in the color and the size. Like some people. But whatever God gave us. Right? Godliness with contentment is great gain. It will get the job done. Now, hold your seat. Buckle up. Dangerous viper. You know what is that? We need to shake off a gullible spirit. Did you hear what I said? A gullible spirit. This is something that we need to bring under control. It's getting out of hand. A gullible spirit is a spirit where you're easily deceived or tricked. And willing to believe. And willing to believe everything people say. I have great confidence in certain people. Are you hearing me? I admire how they get up in life, Pastor. I admire how they look. But a lot of these people, I have no respect for what they say. I, have, I am one, and I am thankful, and I am praying. I don't run for everything. Everything that God gave me, I realize it is sacred. It is costly, it is holy, and I cannot throw it away like that because of certain personality. I have to guard it because it is precious. And when you sum it up, everything we have, it took a life. Somebody gave the Lord Jesus in order to obtain it. So everything from God is costly. And everything God gave it to us, we must not make it cheap. And in the process, we must do everything to preserve it. Are you hearing what I'm saying, folks? So I'm not willing to throw it away because of people. But there's a gullible spirit that is taking place today. I want to warn this church. Pastor warning. And I came here with a heart tonight of love and compassion. You see all this thing going on on television? Blessing water? Huh? Nobody want to talk about it? Huh? Some people have salt to put in their food, but a Richard... But they're buying salt and carrying the air to walk on. I come to tell you tonight, don't fall for that. Not even the water from the river Ganges or the water from the river Jordan. And not even wash of water. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. Don't even believe in that. Everything I have from God is already blessed. Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise, somebody. I'm going to talk about it. I have people from my congregation going up there.
People are so gullible. Somebody got to talk about it. I am not afraid. First hand information. And I'm not here to throw words. I'm here to warn you tonight. To open your eyes. Don't go easy with it. Take a stand. Your relationship with God is at stake. If you don't got it. Well, I went up to one of them. Upstairs at Pennywise and Shogunas. See, I could call name, you know. I just go there too. It have two stories. But I just go on in the owner. I need one where Sister Dolly just send me to buy little things, you know. I just go there, you know. So if you see me coming out there again, a little thing for sure. I don't go upstairs, you know. Upstairs is detrimental. I don't go upstairs. Lady went up there and spoke to one of the ministers. Son have a problem. He said, no problem. You have problem? No problem. Bring an offering could hurt. Me must hurt you. She tells herself, my back already hurting me. I go bring offering to hurt me now. She went in the bank pastor, get somebody to stand collateral, take out a loan of $7,000. Rush up and give the man. And he gave the man. The lady lived Shagwana's. Turn around and he tell her, this church has plenty of confusion here, so from tomorrow, they transmit to San Fernando. The woman have a bicycle, much less a motor car, to go to San Fernando, so she lost that. I am tempted to say good for she, but I can't take that step. I can't take that step. I think I'll be, I, I think I'll be a little bit cruel. I look too hard. I can't be hard on the poor lady. She have loan to pay. And the man gone. The Bible teaches us we must not follow signs. Signs must follow believers. We have to open our eyes. We have to change our mentality. Is that all that we see we get. I am a firm believer of what the scripture says. But there's too much sidekicks today that is belittling the word of God and putting the, the word of the Lord on the reserve bench. The word of God ain't play now. Let me use it in like fast sports is concerned. The word of God is sitting on the reserve bench now and other things playing. I don't think I come to throw words here. If I go in wrong paths, will talk to me. That's the kind of relationship I have. These manufacturers are cloth. They don't know what color to come up with now. They don't know what color. They bind it out so much. If it's not a blue cloth, it's a white cloth, it's a yellow cloth, it's a red cloth. Your victory does not come in the cloth. Yeah. You're not hearing me tonight. And I thank God for the sacred oil. I use it. Are you hearing me? And if you be realistic, it's not in the sweet oil, it's not in the canola oil, it's not in the coconut oil too. It is in the Lord Jesus. And there are a lot of things that was intended to be good, Pastor. People turn it around. And they make evil out of it. Yeah, fella in TV offering no evil oil now. <laughs> you said I want no evil oil. All kind of soap. I saw on the TV they give a woman, she was sick, and they give her some water. Drink the water. Holy water. Healing water. Do, 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 do. I see the woman do so. I say, God, you look like punching rum or what? She go on with that. What happened to the word of God? Where is faith in the word of God? Are you hearing me? Let's get back to the word of God. This hocus pocus abracadabra must stop. 
if we want to see the fulfillment of what God has promised to us and to see the reality of it, we got to have some house cleaning and get rid of some of these things. And in the process, some people might be embarrassed, but do not patronize anybody. If they will mislead you, stand on the word of God. Say amen, somebody. You know, when gentlemen you know, pass, but are talking the truth. I believe in the gift of prophesying. The church believe in it. I saw with my own eyes. I came here. God used pastor. God used people to bring prophetic word. It's a step in the right direction. We must not despise prophesying. But there's nothing illegal in trying the spirit. Nothing illegal. The Bible says try the spirit. And we must know what kind of spirit it is. Are you hearing me, folks? I told you right here somebody came in my church. Right here they came. I told you that come in my church and tell a young lady, Pastor. I, I tell you that. Tell, tell a lady. God show me you're going to be close to the pastor. I hear that. From the time he leave, she only watch him and wink in she eye like that. <laughs> the man tells she that. So what nonsense is this boy? <laughs> no, I said that girl only wink in eye, what happened? She have eye problem? <laughs> what kind of discord is that? Prophecies don't bring division, it unite. It don't bring contention. I, I want to go into that to make you bitter against it, to dislike it. And to have a feelings against it. But we got to be careful when we say the Lord show us. We must be very careful when we're putting the Lord in the arrangements. I told a fellow right in New York I was preaching. I saw him one time, brother. And I, I'm not throwing words. He would not settle his life. He would not correct his life. Everybody know him. He come back one time when I reached. I couldn't wait for you to come back to America. I said, well, he must get some money and he want to give me it. <laughs> you know, you know, you just think sometimes, you know what I mean? <laughs> he said, I didn't want to call you and I didn't want to write you. I want to tell you. Get a prophecy. I've got cross seven oceans. And I've got to preach. I look at him. No any lifestyle. I say, what you need is seven seas cod liver oil. <laughs> That's what you need. You need that. You need that. You know, seven ocean is seven seas, cut liver oil you need. <laughs> Mix up God in everything. Mix up God in everything. Farmer got carried away. Farmer got carried away. Look up in the sky one day. You see the cloud formulate a pea. <laughs> you know that? He gone home and he tell everybody, I quit blowing. I ain't know what happened. He said, God called me. I see P to preach. <laughs> but I said, don't be foolish. It's bad to be a fool, much more old fool. That be, he mean to plow. <laughs> he mean to preach. Everybody take this thing as a joke. This is no joke, you know. This is serious business I'm talking about. This is a new year. We cannot continue what affected us in 211 and have a crossover. We only block in our own blessings tonight. I said, shake it off. Shake it off. Wait for somebody to shake it off for you. I never read that a fellow who was standing there take a big piece of stick and say, Paul, put out your hand. Let me kill him. <laughs> you have to act on your own. You have to recognize the danger of these monsters that is clinging to you what is doing and shake it off Watching the time, you know. can I give you another one <laughs> huh? Pass? a grumpy spirit mark the word grumpy spirit so I'm going all in G <laughs> I'm moving good a grumpy spirit is a spirit that Easily, easily annoyed you and put you in a spirit of complaining about everything. And let me put it this way. 
whether it's in your favor or not in your favor, you're always grumpy. I want to be honest with you folks. You know how many churches I went to over the years. God has blessed me to preach in this country as an evangelist. I want to see somebody else just pass. If I didn't have to preach, I jump in my car one time and I go back home. One time and I go back home. I thought that I pulled a piece of wood and bust my head. <laughs> one time I said I have to preach. I'm take it. <laughs> Try to be nice. Get the problem home and come with it here. Somebody upset them home and they come not only upset here but to upset everybody. I will never preach any truth, buddy. <laughs> Always complaining. The church is doing nothing. And the moment you start to do something, if you hear excuse. To go to the wedding, the tiger bomb, and the Vicks and the Tomajin walk. I thought you tell me you can't go to the wedding girl. Yeah, I put Tiger Balm and I put Vicks and it real walk you to see how I think it. And I go on to the wedding. But to come to church, Tiger Balm and Vicks don't walk anymore. <laughs> come here complaining. Nothing good. Nothing in their favor. That's the kind of spirit. That's the kind of attitude. How could you associate with people like that? How could you invest in people like that? Are you hearing me? I am not saying everything will be in your favor. I am not saying that you will laugh and talk about everything that is detrimental. Look, look, the other day, my car put it on, Pastor. And all the preacher I am who believe in faith in God, listen. <laughs> Nobody see me in the middle of the road dancing and saying, Praise God, the car shut down. Praise God, the car shut down. No! <laughs> Look, if you see on my face there, I just do an engine work, Richie. Just spend a lot of money on the thing, put me down in the middle of the road. And especially when people know you, better hurry! <laughs> Things in life, let's be realistic, change your countenance. But we get to get rid of that spirit and realize we have more working for us than that which is working against us. I have to close, man. Give one more. Say, shake it off. Shake it off. A grim spirit. <laughs> a grim spirit. You know what is a grim spirit? You're always worried. Worrying without hope. I had a fellow by me there. Listen, when you come down to Villano, it's a Chinatown, you know. Yes. In half mile stretch, seven Chinese restaurants. And four supermarkets. You just open one call long, and I wouldn't be surprised not to love, know they have one call short. If it's not Hong one, it's Hong two. And so they go in and they're rhyming like that. What do you see down there? I won with a brick battery, I told you that. Selling block. I watch him. I was right there. Hey, Ramki, soon what happened, boy? Pretty well, bad, you know, boy. Take that chiming, 2,000, yeah. Yeah, take that 3,000, yeah. This thing full, so it didn't work out. You know, what is going to come to mango grass? Yes, no, you know. All is grim. I know things bad. We have to be realistic. And they keep on going like that in the world, let me tell you. And I speak for our country. I can't cover up. I'm not a politician. Of course, we could admit things look grim, Pass. Now, don't come to the conclusion and say, I wonder whose side he's on. No, I'm talking reality. Look what's happening. You can't trust nobody. Things are so difficult today. You have to look over your shoulder. How more careful, careful a man could be. Long time ago, they used to have specific bad John. Now everybody's a bad John. <laughs> One man was noted about giving you a lash. Everybody wants a lash, you know. You don't have to drive on the wrong side, but be wrong on the road. People, listen, it looked grim on the outside. 
the downturn of the economy. You, you, you agree with me? There are a lot of food stuff now. They are raising the price, but you're getting smaller. The bottle getting smaller. Look how the butter getting small now. Huh? Backwater hops ready here. They could have put it in a slimy shot. <laughs> it's a little thing like that. It's so, look, look, look. I want to call the name. But if it's so small, it gets the thing. It's only. Listen. I could have eaten all of these since I'd only stand it. <laughs> cutting on the size. You're raising the price. Things look grim. We have reasons to complain. We have reasons to voice our opinion. Very vocal. We can't cover up. Even in the kingdom of God, there are a lot of things look grim today. I can't cover up that. Pastor a church up there, lovely people. And sometimes I said, oh God, <laughs> how much talk I go talk? How much I go do? Family is divided. This one is talking to that one. That one is talking to that one. Who is black, white. And, and all, look, look, you have to deal with this. And I said, sometimes I wonder, what are preaching? They ain't learning. And what else to preach? They're going through here, and I know where it's coming out. <laughs> I don't know. Like it's making sense. I speak my heart to you, friends. Because I'm not seeing the changes that I anticipate, Pass. I am not able to do that. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's supposed to do that. But to, to be realistic, it looks grim sometimes. But shake up that spirit. There is still hope. God will never give us more than we can bear. Are you hearing me, folks? Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But God will deliver us out of them all. And if he do not deliver us out of them all, he will give us the grace. The greatest victory Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego get, go get. If God had stopped them from going through the fiery furnace, that was a victory to rejoice. But allowing them to go through and getting to the end untouched. Is a bigger victory. Is a bigger victory. That when you could go into a situation and you could come out of it triumphant, that's enough to give God praise and to give Him thanks. And even though things look grim and they look difficult and people are crying wolf, our master is still in control. There is still hope for the hopeless. There is still help for the helpless. And God is the master of taking the impossible and making it possible. He knows very well how to take that which is intended to work evil and work it for your good. He knows very well how to take that which is empty and make it plenty. Are you hearing me? Do not underestimate him. What he did yesterday, he can do it today and do it far better tomorrow. Give him a hand of praise. I'm ready to pray. So I want you to say, shake it off. Can you imagine the apostle Paul with a viper in his hand? Ladies and gentlemen, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And doing a viper, he could have never functioned comfortable. He could have never been effective with a viper in his hand. So to function with a measure of comfort and to do justice to the work of the Lord, and to his own benefit, he had to shake it off. Don't keep it. Don't wait for nobody to shake it off. God has given you the power according to the power that work it in you. Shake it off. In the word of God, there are ways how you could shake it off. Don't keep it. Don't keep it because other people have it. Are you hearing me? Shake it off. So tonight, I'm ready to pray. Bow your heads. I think I went a little longer than I thought, but look. We close now. You are here with us this evening. There's not just a viper, poisonous viper in your hands, but sin is in control of your whole life. Poisonous, detrimental, stifling your growth, putting you in a state of misery. There's a cure for sin. There's a remedy for sin. That bondage can be you could be delivered from that. That chain can be broken tonight. Because Jesus is saying tonight, if you come, I will in no wise cast you out. You want to be set free from that big viper 
which is sin that is holding you down hindering you from getting what God got in store for you making you an outcast and an alien and a standby instead of receiving and achieving you see brother Ramke soon I need special prayer tonight and I want to turn it over to Jesus so he can set me free and release me from that stronghold and bring me into the newness of life so I can develop a relationship with my creator if you need that prayer tonight just lift up your hand where you are and I'm going to pray with you thank you sir lift it up somebody else quickly another hand thank you several hands thank you put it down put it down tonight you have never given your life to the Lord tonight God didn't send you here by mistake I want to pray with you you lifted your hands stand up right where you are stand up right where you are tonight could you take another step of faith and come let me just have a word of prayer with you you want to make that complete surrender and then I'm going to pray another corporate prayer and then pastor will come is there anyone else tonight you have never given your life to the Lord you want to do it this evening you may never have an upper, other opportunity lift up that right hand and I want you to say from your heart Lord Jesus I thank you for paying the price for my sins you got power to forgive sins Lord Jesus please be merciful to me forgive me for all my sins I receive you into my heart be my Lord and master by faith I believe it by faith I accept it break those chains set me free and bring me into the newness of life which is in you touch him right now Lord touch him let this process continue let the grace of God continue to be upon him that you will teach him give him that hunger and the thirst for righteousness day by day Lord that you will satisfy the longing in the inside as he seek you to serve you touch this lady tonight in the name of Jesus from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet break those chains right now when we bring you in the presence of the Lord we thank you and we praise you in Jesus name every husband that is not saved every father every mother every wife every son every daughter every neighbor every friend I bring them before the Lord right now because there is no distance in prayer I want you to visualize those people right now and those chains be broken right now and be set free in the name of Jesus now we're going to pray a corporate prayer. You know I'm not going to show, ask for a show of hands. Who greedy? You know nobody ain't going to raise their hand. You know that. I ain't going to ask that. Or who grumpy? Or who gullible? I'm not going to ask that. But this message has affected you in some way. That the Holy Spirit show you and show you there's a need to improve. Because there are areas in your life need to be addressed. Things happen, they don't happen overnight. It, it happening a long time, but we ignore it. And we wait until it get out of order to the extent that it become uncontrollable. And not only it affect us, it affect people around us. But tonight, through this message, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. There are certain things in your life that you need to address. That you know, you know, you know. That is greatly hindering you, this stronghold. You want to get rid of it tonight. I don't know what it is. I'm not going to give you this mic to say it. I'm not going to tell you to ask, ask you. No, that's between you and God. But there must be a desire on your part to surrender it to the Lord so you could be free. All right? I want you to stand. Come. Anybody tonight, come. Come on, this altar. Anybody tonight. Anybody. You sense the need for that prayer tonight. The altar is open right here. The altar is open right here tonight. Come. Right here. 
whatever area the Holy Spirit has spoken to you through this message, there are things that you need to shake off. Don't wait for something drastic to happen then to shake it off. But God sent me to preach this message as a warning. As a warning. Because He want to bless you. He want to prosper you. He want you to advance. He want you to grow. He want you to expand. Shake it off today. Because it will hinder you along the way. Sometime or the other. If not Sunday, it will be Monday. It will be Tuesday. Someday it will catch up with you. If it is not already. But I thank God for His mercy and for His word. Which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our part. Come. Then those of you that are standing, let's all stand. Worship team, go ahead and sing. I'm going to pray a prayer and then pastor will take over. Bless the name of the Lord. Come with our hearts open to receive tonight. Right where you are tonight, God can minister. The Holy Spirit can speak right where you are. I want you to visualize these things that are hindering you. Visualize the area tonight that you need God to correct. Thank you, Lord, for this young man tonight. Your spirit search in the heart, Lord. These vipers, whatever it is, give them that strength to shake it off. Set him free tonight. Set him free. In the name of Jesus, be set free. Whatever is holding you back in relation to the word that was preached, release it and let it go tonight. You cannot continue, said the Lord, tonight. You're digging your pit deeper and deeper. Let it go tonight and be free. So the blessings that come, so I give you the strength. I preach it. I, I, I declare it right now, the strength to shake it off. Must be courage. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Bring that strength right now in the name of Jesus. Touch. Touch right now. Break those yokes right now. Bring the strength of this life. Whatever it is, oh God, nothing is too hard. Nothing is too hard. You're the master of over every situation. You got power, real power to destroy. Every work of the enemy tonight. Grant it unto my brother, Lord. No, those, those vipers will perish. They will die. So, in the name of Jesus. Break it right now. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Receive that strength right now in your life. Those vipers will go, go, go tonight. Give me the strength. Give me the muscle courage tonight to shake it off tonight. The bonus in the name of Jesus. To say enough is enough. Right now in the name of Jesus, bring that strength upon you. In Jesus' name. I claim it done right now. Yes, minister by your power. Shake it off. Shake it off. Whatever it is. As it comes, it can go tonight. Nothing is too hard for you to do. Your God's child right now. In the name of Jesus. Release it and let it go. Holy Spirit, give that strength. Be in obedience to God's word. Apply God's words. With a weapon to destroy it right now. Yes, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Whatever it is. Whatever. Whatever it is. You know it tonight. Shake it off. Yes, right now. We speak that word right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I told you right now. Rest your hand. Good vibe. Must go. Must continue tonight. In the name of Jesus, receive, receive, receive tonight by your power and by your might. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the congregation. Outstretch your hands upon your people tonight. Break all chains. Break all fetters tonight. Set the people free. In the name of the Lord. Yes, sir. Every sickness tonight must go. Bring complete healing. Every door. That is closed, be open. Align with your word. Yes, Lord. Yes. Sing it now. Yeah. Oh, Lord God. Yes, Father. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Rise up. Yes, rise up. Yes.
Thank you, Lord, for victory tonight. Dear Lord, see Oh, yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you. Oh, yes, hallelujah. Come on, ask the Lord. Ask him to help you tonight. Help is on its way. Nobody who cried for God will be Lord tonight. No, he was sure. This is your time. This is your moment of deliverance. This is your time to be set free. You cannot walk along and live with those poisonous vipers. Go tonight. Yes. Thank you for victory tonight, Lord. Yes. Shake it off. Shake it off. Yes. It don't belong to my hands. Vipers don't belong to me. Tell the Lord that. Yes. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I will soar with you. Your spirit leads me on. By the power of your love. And I will soar with you. Your spirit leads me on. Yes, Lord. By the power of your Let us allow the Lord, the word of God, to bring a measure of light upon our part every day. And through this light, we can see the areas in our lives where we are in darkness. Are you hearing me? Without the word, you cannot see the areas of darkness. When God show it, seek to correct it. With the help of the Lord, God can give you the strength. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor.